Today we're going to build a pagination API using FastAPI. So FastAPI is a Python library using which we can easily build uh, REST APIs. So I prefer FastAPI for our pagination purposes. So uh, let's see how we can use FastAPI to build paginations API. So pagination API is something that you've already seen. You have a big web page and you have pages one, two, three, four, five, next page and the previous page and so on. So we're gonna see how um, the backend gives responses to such an API call. So I have uh, some dummy data, which is uh, huge data. I got this data from the website called JSON Placeholder. You can just search it. It is JSON Placeholder and it is a pretty good website. You can get all uh, these dummy data uh, on that website. So I have given this link below. You can just go to the link and grab this data. So all of this is present in a file called data.json. So I have set up my fast API, uh, what do you call it, environment. So if you don't know how to set up the fast API environment, I've written a simple step-by-step uh, -step guide, so you can have a look at it uh, on the post. The post is in the description, so just go to the post. Uh, it doesn't even take five minutes. It takes like two to three minutes to set this up. You have to install uh, two packages called Fast API and uh, UV Car. So this is used for hosting the website locally, and this is used for basically building the APIs. So let's get started. And yeah, for API testing purposes, I'm going to be using Postman because I'm used to it. Uh, you can uh, just use your browser and I think it's fine. I'll also show you how you do it in the browser. So let's get started. So first of all, we'll create a simple fast API uh, request. So from fast API, import fast API and I will also import JSON because I want to read this data JSON file. So first of all app is nothing but fast API and then with yeah open the data JSON file I'm storing the data that JSON in the variable called data and the data length is nothing but the length of the data. So let's write our first get request. Uh, I mean, the first and the last get request. So it is app dot get, and it's going to be posts. So we're just creating a simple get request from the app that we've created in line number four, and the URL endpoint is slash posts. So we're going to see how this is going to be used. So let's say. We have um, a function called read posts and uh, it just returns the data. So I'm going to show you how big of a data this is. So if we save it and uh, we run it in the terminal, I use a virtual environment. I've shown in the documentation how to activate the virtual environment too. So that's pretty good. And to run it, uh, we're going to use uvcorn main app. Uh, the main is because the file name is main.py and the app is because uh, I've created an object called app. If you create something different, then you'll have to use something different. If the file name is say index, you have to use index colon app. And I'll use the option reload because I want the website or the server to reload automatically when I do some changes to the file. So let's see. Yeah, it gave us a website and we're going to copy it uh, and I'm going to use Chrome to open it it is post so we can see that we have all the posts all the hundred posts that is present in David JSON which is really large so we use pagination to get a limited number of posts uh, for each page so the output for me is this way because I use an extension called uh, JSON Viewer. So it's a really good extension. Uh, it lets you see the JSON output in a beautiful formatted way. 
if not, it's going to look something like this. This is the regular way with how the output looks. And I want it beautified, so I use JSON Viewer. And you can do the same thing in Postman too. So I lot of request and call it Pagination API. And this is HTTP 127001 colon 8000 slash post mm -hmm. you can see even this does uh, the output in a beautified way so I just want to use this uh, since both of them is the same let me just close Chrome. okay so we're getting all the data but we don't want all the data we just want a limited set of data so we pass something called as query parameters to this uh, endpoint so this way we the query parameters are going to be something called as page number which is an integer and the default value is 1 and page size which is also an integer and its default value is 10 so the page number uh, tells us that which page number uh, are you at page number 1 page number 2 page number 3 or so on and page size tells us how many uh, posts do you want in that specific page so in page number one I want 10 posts in page number two I want 10 posts in page number three I want 10 posts so I want this on and on until I cannot get any more posts or I cannot go to any more pages so how do we get this one so we can do it as start is going to be page number times page size it's actually page number minus one times page size and the and it's going to be the start plus page size so uh, initially the page start is going to be zero and whatever that is zero and the end is going to be zero plus page size 10 so from zero to 10 I want all the posts in this data so if I return data of start to end I get all the posts now if this becomes 2 this becomes page number minus 1 which is 1 into 10 which is 10 so from 10 to 10 plus 10 20 I want all the pages so if I save it we can see this automatically reloading and then if we go and use the query parameters as page number is equal to 1 then we can get send request you see there's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so there are only 10 posts so if I go to page number 2 and you see that the ID starts from 1 and 10 so the next page should start from 11 so if you go to page number 2 and click on send you see that it starts from 11 and goes on till 20 but what if you want like only five so we have page size is equal to five so this gives you if you got page one this gives you id one two three four five so we only have five page posts in this page so if we go to page number two it starts from six see six seven eight nine and ten so this way we are able to filter the data according to the page number and the page size but this is not the actual standard way in which we perform pagination so uh, how it actually is is going to be something like uh, this let me show you so we have something called uh, the data which is mm, some array of data and then we have something called pagination which is which has two items one is next which is linked to the next page and one is previous which links to the previous page and we also have count which gives the total number of items in the current page and we also have total which gives the total number of uh, items so let's say this data length is of size 100 so the total is 100 
can count as basically the page size. It's the number of items in the page. If it's five, it's five. It's if it's ten, it's ten. So pagination will next and previous lines are if you're in page number one, the next page is page number two and page size ten. And the previous page is page number zero and page size ten. But we don't have a previous page for the first page. We only have a previous page for pages greater than one. And similarly, we don't have the next page for the last page. We only have the next page for all the pages except the last page. So we're going to have to write something like that. So let's say we have a, something a dictionary called response. And the data is the data from start to end. And it's total. I'm sorry. Total is the data length. And it's count is the page size and when it comes to its pagination we will assign its next and previous values dynamically so how do we assign it let's say if the page number uh, let's say that if the end value is greater than or equal to the data length that means you are at the last page so you don't have next page so your next page will be none but you can have a previous page. So your previous page is gonna be something like slash posts page number is equal to page number minus one, which is the previous page, and page size is equal to page size. But what if the first page is itself the last page? Then it doesn't have next and doesn't have previous. So if page number is greater than one, only then we do this, else we will just put response of previous as none. And here, if the data is greater than, uh, is less than the data length, then it can be first page or any other pages except the last page. So if page number is greater than one, then you have a previous page. If not, you don't have a previous page. And irrespective of the situation, you have a next page. So the next page is page number plus one with the previous size. The previous page is page number minus one and the page size. And after doing all this, we'll just return the response. So if you have a look at this, uh, let's say I'm at page number two page size is 5, uh, let's say I'm at page number 1, and page size is 5. So if I hit it, you can see that the data is user ID 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And I see the total count is 100, this count of number of items is 5, and the pagination is previous is null, so that is, it is the first page. And the next is this, so if I click on this, and I click on send, I see that I'm at page number two. And I have a previous page of page one. So if I click on this and I hit send, I'll go back to the first page. So this way, I'll be able to go back to the first page and the next page without manually changing the URL. So you see that the page size equals five and the account is five. So if I make this 20, I'll get 20 posts with count 20 and the page size 20. And if I make it 100, this is the first and the last page. And hence, my next is none and the previous is also none. So this way, we are able to filter out a huge amount of data and assign it in the form of page numbers and pages. So we can have a one page which contains a limited number of of, uh, items and the next page has the same limited number of items but ordered so the first page is 1 to 10 the next page is 11 to 20 the next page is 21 to 30 and the next page is 31 to 40 and so on so this way we can easily create a pagination API for any front-end or back-end database in a matter of minutes using fast api so that is one of the reasons i really love this api there's a lot of functionalities included in it but 
you can do the same thing in any other uh, API library like Flask uh, because it's just the same Python code, nothing else. The only thing that you have to know is how to implement query parameters in that particular package or that particular library. So this is one of the easiest ways in which you can build a pagination API using fast API. So yeah, thank you for watching. If you have any queries, please comment down below. I'd like to uh, you know, clarify those. Uh, I've just uh, learned fast API recently and you also want to learn together so you can read my blog articles if you want to learn more about it so yeah thank you